What's up, guys? Welcome back to Deeper Dive CFP. Today's going to be my Week 12 preview show. Uh, big headline game of this week. Oklahoma's going to go on the road to play Baylor. Game day is going to be there. There's plenty of other good games as well. As always, guys, I'm going to leave time markers in the description below, so check that out. Uh, let's get right into it. Boy, yeah, and I'll be right here in my spot with a little more cash than I already got. Tripping off you because you had your shot with my skin tan. All right, guys, with my one-point pick, I've got Cal beating USC at home, improving to 6-4, and four, getting bowl eligible, and sealing Clay Helton's fate at USC. Cal started the season 4-0, but quickly took a downturn. Their quarterback, Chase Garbers, got hurt against Arizona State. They lost that game, and they went on to lose the next three to put them at 4-4. Four and four. But they bounced back last week with a huge win against Washington State. Uh, quarterback Devin Monster stepped up big with 16-24 for 230 yards and three touchdowns. He also added 43 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Monster was the one who actually took over for Garbers after he got hurt against Arizona State, and he looked really bad for most of the season. He himself went down against Utah. Uh, that was a game they lost 35-0, but in his return last week, it looked really good. Uh, I think part of the reason why Cal's offense was able to produce so much against Washington State, they didn't use Monster as much in the, on the ground. For example, he had 19 carries against Oregon State. Uh, I, I think taking him a little bit out of the ground game makes him a bigger threat in the passing game. And I think one other thing you have to remember in this game, Cal is one of the best defenses in the Pac-12. In eight of their nine games this year, they've given up 24 points or less. Uh, the only exception to that was, like, like I said, Utah scored 35 on them. But that's not too unacceptable there, especially considering Utah is a great offense. Uh, they held Oregon to 17 points. Justin Herbert, C.J. Verdell, all the weapons Oregon has, they held them to 17 points in Austin Stadium. That's pretty impressive. Uh, they held Washington State, like I said, to 20 points last week, and they also held Washington to 19. So Cal's got a great defense. Give credit where credit is due to USC. They stepped up last week with a big win against Arizona State. Uh, Clay held really fighting for his job. The team really showed that in their game last week. Uh, but like I said, they'll have to face a really stout defense this week. Keaton Slovis has been a little bit inconsistent uh, as far as the interceptions go. He had three against Oregon, like I said. Uh, did do a little better job balancing things out last week against Arizona State. Uh, I think Cal's offense did look good enough last week, though, versus Washington State to where I do feel good enough to pick them in this game. And that's why I'm going with Cal to pull off the upset against USC. I think it's going to be a close game. My final, Cal 26-24. With my two-point pick, guys, I've got Georgia going on the road and taking care of business against Auburn. Everything in me is telling me to go with Auburn in this one, guys. They're coming off the bye, uh, and it feels like everything is set up for them to pull off the upset against Georgia. Gus Malzahn is obviously known to drop a few trick plays. He now he's had two weeks to think about this game. This is a big game for Bo Nix, a uh, big game for everybody on that Auburn team. I think he's going to have some trick plays up his sleeve for sure, but I'm going to go with my head in this one and not my gut. Uh, really, in Auburn's three big games this year against Oregon, Florida, and LSU, uh, Bo Nix and all those games has finished with either a 40 or 42% completion percentage, uh, and, and he's facing a really good Georgia defense. They're stout. They shut out Kentucky, and they shut out Missouri two of these past three weeks. They haven't allowed an opponent to score more than 20 points all year. That, that, that's impressive. Uh, they're averaging, giving up 10 points per game. That goes for second in the country. And their defense holds opposing offenses to be just 29.6% on third down. Very impressive from Georgia. I think Knicks hasn't been efficient enough to, to give me the confidence to be able to pick him in this game. I think Georgia's going to be able to get off the field on third down. And also, I think Jake Fromm has proven time and time again that he steps up in big games. Thinking back to his freshman year in 2017, got a big win at Notre Dame. Stepped up in the SEC Championship against Auburn that year. Obviously, they made it to the playoff. They beat Oklahoma. And then Jake Fromm played pretty well in the National Championship game against Alabama. Thinking back to last year, he stepped up against Alabama again in the SEC Championship game. Uh, Jalen Hurts came in and won that game for the Tide, but Fromm started that game off really good. And then this year against Notre Dame, 20-26, 187 and a touchdown, very efficient there. But the one that really bought me over was against Florida. Uh, was 20 of 30, 279 and two touchdowns. So many third down conversions. Uh, such good execution from Fromm. I think he's going to make enough plays in this one. And I think Georgia's defense is good enough to tame Bo Nix in this one. I've got Georgia winning this game close, 21 to 16. With my three point pick, guys, I've got Notre Dame defending their home turf and beating a really good Navy team. This is another game where my guts tell me to go with Navy in an upset here. Uh, first of all, they're 7-1. They're also coming off a bye. Uh, and they're also fourth in the group of five rankings, so they still control their own destiny. Uh, they have everything right in front of them, and they'll have plenty to play for in this one. Considering the fact that if they beat Notre Dame, they quite possibly might jump Cincinnati and become the number one team in the American. And they deserve a lot of credit. Like I said, they're 7-1, and, and their offense has been terrific this year. They have the number one rush offense in the country averaging 358 yards per game. They score 40 points per game. Quarterback Malcolm Perry, over 1,000 yards rushing this year and 15 touchdowns on the ground. They do run the triple option, if, if you remember, so some of this can kind of be skewed, but nevertheless impressive, especially the 40 points per game because they are producing a lot of points. But at the end of the day, I think that game-winning drive that Ian Book had against Virginia Tech to give him the win at home, I, I think that really gave him a lot of confidence. 
Last week against Duke, he was only 18 to 32, but he had four touchdowns. I think Book's got a lot of moxie, and he's the type of guy that makes plays when it matters most. So I think he's going to do that, and I like Notre Dame to win this game 38 to 27 in South Bend. Next, with my four-point pick, I've got Texas going on the road and winning a close one in a tough environment in Ames, Iowa. Texas is going to play 9-0 Baylor next week, but this game actually scares me a little bit more. Uh, Iowa State's going to be the best four-loss team in the country. I mean, I, and I've been high on them all year. Uh, the, the quarterback, Brock Purdy, sophomore quarterback, completing 68% of his passes. He's got 2,850 yards passing, 27 total touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Uh, I think the big thing for that offense, uh, their freshman running back, highly recruited guy, Brees Hall, uh, it's really stepped up these last four games. He has 18 plus carries in all those games, three 100 yard games in that span. He's had three multi touchdown games in that span, too. They have three really good receivers in Deshante Jones, Tariq Milton, and LaMichael Petaway. They've also got one of the best tight ends in the country in Charlie Kohler. They're a team that could easily be 8 and 1 right now. Uh, lost to Iowa in a game that was affected by weather. And, and I would beat them, give Iowa credit, but I think Iowa State definitely could have won that game. They lost to Baylor. Baylor is winning this game 20 0 after three quarters. Iowa State came marching all the way back, took the lead. Charlie Brewer led a great drive at the end of the game to give Baylor the win. And also last week against Oklahoma, they were down 42-21. to They came storming back. We're a two-point conversion away from taking the lead with 24 seconds left. Uh, it was an obvious pass interference call. So certainly, I would say it's a very competitive team. But despite all that, I'm going with Texas because I think seeing all those guys come back last week on defense, you really saw an increase in production. Kansas State scored on the first two drives, but after that, didn't score a touchdown the rest of the game. Their only other touchdown came off a kickoff. So defense really stepped up against Kansas State. And you have to remember, Kansas State was coming hot into that game, too. Uh, they had three straight wins, including an upset win over Oklahoma. So, really good job by the Horns' defense to step up in that game. Didn't look good at first. It was 14-0 early, but defense certainly stepped up. And then, also, the offense has grown throughout the year. Uh, obviously, I have a great quarterback in Sam Ellinger. Y'all know I'm very high on him. Uh, but the run game's gotten really good as the season has progressed. Keontae Ingram had a great game last week, 139 yards and two touchdowns. They also have a great backup running back in Roshan Johnson, uh, kind of a change of pace back, but very physical in his own regard. Uh, they have two stud receivers in Devin DuVernay, who is my dark horse Blatnikoff winner, uh, as well as Colin Johnson, 6 thick, deep threat. This is going to be a close game, guys. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be close, and it's going to be a, a battle, and it's going to be a game of inches for sure. But I have the Longhorns going into Ames, Iowa, tough environment, and winning this game 34-31. to Next, with my five-point pick, I've got Minnesota improving to 10-0 with a big road win against Iowa. Minnesota really surprised me last week in regards to how easily they moved the ball against Penn State. Uh, I mean, their quarterback, Tanner Morgan, was 18-20. He completed 90% of his passes against a top-four defense. Very impressive. He had two receivers over 100 yards, so passing game was certainly working, uh, and the defense was able to force three turnovers in that game. And this is all coming against Penn State, like I said, who has wins over Michigan and Iowa, so a very respectable team in Penn State. Uh, still still right in the playoff hunt. I mean, if Penn State's able to go into the horseshoe and beat Ohio State, they'll be in the playoff. Um, the other reason I'm going to go with Minnesota in this game, Iowa's offense has kind of stalled these last five games. Uh, point totals are as follows, 3, 12, 26, 20, and 22. So the offense has definitely stalled a little bit. Part of the reason that might be is they run a very slow tempo offense, chew up a lot of clock, but teams who succeed in that method tend to be very efficient as well. And I was not. They're 195th in points per game, and they're 161st in total yards in the country. So I was certainly got a, a lot of growing to do on offense. And at the end of the day, I like Minnesota to keep the magic alive, improve the 10 and 0, and win on the road against Iowa, 31 to 17. With my six point pick, guys, I've got Penn State bouncing back and beating Indiana handily at home. Like I just mentioned, Penn State's coming off a tough loss at Minnesota that dropped them from number four in the rankings to number nine. I think James Franklin's going to have his guys motivated to get back on the right track. Uh, as for Indiana, they're seven and two, but I'm telling you, do not be deceived by that. Their best win is at Nebraska, who's four and five. Indiana has not played a good schedule. Uh, the only good team they've really played, matter of fact, is Ohio State, and they, and they got smoked in that game. They lost that game 51-10. to Sean Clifford, the Penn State quarterback, had three interceptions last week. Uh, this game is going to be in Happy Valley. He's only had one turnover in four home games this year. I think Penn State's going to get back rolling on offense. I think their defense is going to step up as well. I've got the Nittany Lions winning this game no problem, 37-17. to Next, with my seven-point pick, I've got Florida going on the road and beating Missouri. Shouldn't be any problem for the Gators. If you'll remember, just a few weeks ago, Missouri was 5-1 and one and looking to be right with Florida and Georgia in the SEC race, but they've dropped to 5-4 and four now. They've lost the last three weeks on the road to Vanderbilt, Kentucky, and Georgia, so definitely proved to be frauds. If you'll remember, they also played all five of those wins at home, so uh, now, that, now that they're having to go on the road, uh, really struggling a lot. They've averaged seven points per game their last three games. Kelly Bryant, their quarterback, has not been at 100% these last few weeks. Didn't seem at all against Georgia. Uh... I looked it up, he, he was warming up and everything, but did not enter the game. 
Does look like he'll play in this one, but it's not going to change the outcome. Florida quarterback Kyle Trask has really stepped in nicely for the injured Felipe Franks. He has over 2,000 yards passing, completing 67% of his passes, 22 touchdowns and just six interceptions. Uh, really, really liked how Florida responded to that Georgia loss. Came out and just dominated Vanderbilt with a 56 and nothing victory. Uh, I think the Gators are the obvious pick here. I mean, I really don't know how you can go with Missouri here. They've looked so bad the last three weeks. Uh, I would have no confidence picking them. I guess if you're going to pick Missouri, put that in the one-point slot because that that's just a total gamble right there. I like Florida to go into Missouri and win this game 35-17. to With my eight-point pick, in a big rivalry game, I've got Michigan stepping up to the plate, improving to 8-2 and, and beating Michigan State. Since losing to Penn State a few weeks ago, Michigan has responded very nicely. They got the big win against Notre Dame at home, 45-14, to the week after they played Penn State. And then the week after that, they went on the road and handled Maryland, 38-7. to The thing that's really changed for Michigan is they just completely committed to the run game. They've got two great running backs in Hassan Haskins and Zach Charbonnet. I think utilizing those guys a little more, just committing to be a, a run-first team, has really taken the pressure off of their quarterback, Shea Patterson. Shea's not been what we expect them to be, but at the end of the day, as long as they're winning, I'm sure Shea will be happy. The other thing is Michigan is coming off a bye as well. Uh, I do know it's a rivalry game. Michigan State's going to be plenty motivated, but they've really struggled these last few weeks. Uh, they've lost four straight, and they have had a tough schedule, so I'll give them that. I mean, they've played three top 10 teams in that span. Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Penn State. But Michigan is right on the level with all those teams, so I don't know how you'd expect Michigan State to just fix things all of a sudden. Their quarterback play has not been good at all. I've been very vocal about that. Their quarterback, Brian Lewerke, only completing 56% of his passes. They do have a good running back in Elijah Collins, uh, and, and he had a breakout game last week, 28 carries. 170 yards and two touchdowns they've tended to kind of shy away from the run game in some of these big games i think just because they feel like they do need to pass at the end of the day though it's irrelevant it's not going to make a difference this game is in the big house you have to remember that as well so i like michigan to take care of business here and win this game 34 to 17. my nine point pick guys and what should be the game of the week with game day being in waco i'm confident in the sooners to go on the road and beat baylor ruining baylor's undefeated season all right listen i know i'm kind of a baylor hater uh, but at the end of the day, they have earned their 9-0. I'll give them that. But I, I, I'm just not bought into this team. They just had way too many close calls this year. They only beat West Virginia by three, only beat TCU in three overtimes last week. Uh, didn't, didn't look good in that game at all. Uh, somehow able to pull out that win. Give them credit because good teams do find a way to win when it matters most. Baylor's certainly done that. While that's true, you would like to see your team kind of dominate every once in a while, and Baylor's really had a hard time doing that. Uh, they only beat Rice by eight. Texas Tech took them into two overtimes. So I think the one guy that deserves the most credit through all that is Charlie Brewer, their quarterback. He's come up big for them time and time again. Specifically, the Iowa State and the TCU game last week made plays at the end of that game, but I don't think he's going to get that opportunity this week. I think OU is just way too explosive on offense for Baylor's defense to handle. They scored at least 40 points in every game this year, except the Texas game where they still scored 34. They have one of the best quarterback wide receiver combos in college football when you think about Jalen Hurts and C.D. Lamb. They also have a great running back in Kennedy Brooks, and whenever they commit to the run game, Kennedy Brooks is very effective. I will give you this, their defense has been inconsistent. Uh, gave up 48 to Kansas State, gave up 41 last week to Iowa State, and almost let Iowa State come all the way back in the fourth quarter. But overall, I think Oklahoma is just the way better team here. Uh, they're not a half point favorite on the road that should tell you something going up against an undefeated team Vegas thinks they'll use a better team so do I I like Oklahoma spoiling Baylor's undefeated season and winning this game 38 to 27 and then last guys with my 10 point pick I've got Clemson dismantling Wake Forest at home Wake Forest is coming off a loss against Virginia Tech the Clemson Tigers are going to win this game big I'm going to keep this one short and sweet guys there's, I mean th there's really no argument here first of all Vegas got this game as a 35 point line in favor of Clemson and Wake Forest is 7-2. and two. Like This is probably one of Clemson's hardest tests of the year. And, and they're still a 35-point favorite. Next reason. This game is at Clemson. Trevor Lawrence, 9 touchdowns, 0 interceptions in his last 3 games. Travis Etienne, over 1,000 yards rushing. Been phenomenal all year. Their defense has only given up 11.5 points per game this season. Wake Forest is also coming off a loss to Virginia Tech. Didn't look good in that game. Their star receiver, Sage Surratt. Uh, he's got over 1,000 yards receiving this year and 11 touchdowns. Got announced he was going to be out for the year. That's a huge loss. That was a guy that maybe, maybe if they had him, they, they could keep this game respectable. But at the end of the day, this is going to be a blowout, guys. This is going to be an absolute blowout. I like Clemson. Big at home, 55-14. to 14. So that's going to wrap it up for my pick'em, guys. But I want to give you five more games to be on the lookout for. Obviously, college football has got a plethora of good games every week. These are five that weren't mentioned here, and I think you should definitely keep your eye on. First one, Wisconsin is going to go on the road to play Nebraska. Uh, this game is going to be at noon on the Big Ten Network. Wisconsin was able to get a huge win against Iowa last week, 24-22. to After suffering two tough losses, one against Illinois, who's actually kind of come on now. 
I, like I said in my last video, Illinois is now 6-4, and four, bowl eligible, with some nice wins. I think the bigger story here, though, doesn't have any effects for this season necessarily. Uh, I, I'm, I just want to see how Scott Frost is going to get his team to respond. You know, Scott Frost is now in year two at Nebraska. Saw how quick he was able to turn around UCF. Uh, whenever he got there, they were coming off a, a season where they went 0-12. Two years later, they went 12-0. and Things are taking a little slower at Nebraska, and I'm not giving them all the blame for that. But the last game they played, they lost on the road to Purdue. Really bad loss. Really mismanaged the clock at the end of the game. J just some things that were in Nebraska's control that they kind of let slip, and that was the reason why they lost. This game's going to be in Lincoln. Wisconsin, two touchdown favorites. Uh, Nebraska certainly got a lot of talent. They got a great quarterback in Adrian Martinez. Let's see if the bye week can maybe get him healthy and maybe get Nebraska to be competitive in this game. And who knows? You know, Scott Frost is a great coach. Obviously, has a great track record of success. Who knows if Nebraska can turn things around this week, pull off the upset against Wisconsin, and get some momentum heading into the year three. Next game I want you to keep your eyes on, guys. Bama's going to go on the road to Mississippi State. This will be at noon Eastern on ESPN. Um... I have no doubt Bama's going to win this game. Played very competitively against LSU. I think at this point, though, we just got to acknowledge that LSU offense is going to be one of the best in college football history. I mean, right up there with 2005 Texas, all those good USC teams. This LSU offense is legit. So if you're Bama, tip your cap to LSU and move on. They still control their own destiny. Being ranked at number five, there's going to be somebody in the top four to lose. Bama still controls their own destiny. If they win out, if they beat Auburn, they'll be in. The bigger reason I want to watch this game, though, is I want to watch Tua play. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Tua. I mentioned on my Instagram that Rick Neuheisel, the analyst at CBS, former UCLA head coach, said that Tua should stay another year. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to keep up with Tua and his draft stock. Obviously, last week really didn't help it, but I don't think it hurt it either. I think scouts know he's hurt. I guess the question around Tua is his durability, but as it pertains to this season, uh, is Tua going to come back healthy? W will they continue to tailor the offense around him? How is Tua going to look on the road? Mississippi State's not a great team, but they did bounce back in their last game. Coming off a of bye week, uh, really dominated Arkansas a few weeks ago. Now, take that with a grain of salt because Arkansas is not good. I've been very vocal about that. But at the end of the day, it's football. Bama's still going to have to come and play football. Let's see how they respond. I'm very confident, though. Nick Saban runs a great program. He's going to have his guys ready to go. Uh, just a game to watch. Noon Eastern on ESPN. Next game, guys, LSU at Ole Miss. This game will be at 7 Eastern on ESPN as well. LSU obviously coming off the biggest win maybe in the program's history. Now, it wasn't a national championship game, so maybe that's a little bit of an hyperbole, but uh, just a huge win. Kind of dethroned Alabama as the king of the SEC West. LSU's a, a legit team, like I said. One thing I'm looking for in this game is how is LSU going to come out and play? Obviously, I don't think anybody thinks Ole Miss is going to win this game, but it's certainly a possibility that LSU comes out a little flat after last week. I mean, that's about the highest of highs you can get. Let's see if they come out with the same intensity as they did last week or if they kind of come out slow. Because remember, that's exactly what Auburn did. Auburn came out slow, didn't execute the little things right, and Ole Miss was driving trying to win that game in the last minute. So LSU's still got to come play football. This game's going to be in Oxford, like I said. Uh, there's no real threat that LSU's going to lose this game. Uh, the other big storyline in this one is, is Matt Luke. I'm a big fan of Matt Luke. He, I think he's great for the Ole Miss program, but at the end of the day, Ole Miss is 4-6. and six. They're a young team. I understand that. Um, Matt Luke's certainly on the hot seat, though. I'm just looking to see if that staff makes some adjustments heading to this game and, and is able to, to at least keep it competitive. The last one I want you to keep your eye on, guys. UCLA is going to go on the road to Utah. This will be at 8 o'clock Eastern on Fox. I've been very high on Utah this year, guys. Uh, I, I put that stat out there, how they just dominated Pac-12 opponents. Did play a close game against Washington on the road, but I think Washington, much like Iowa State, a uh, very good four-loss team. Just kind of played the victim of uh, playing a tough schedule. But I think the bigger story here is UCLA. I think UCLA could certainly remain competitive. Uh, they're now 4-5. and five. They've been playing a lot better the last few weeks. Much like at Tennessee, I mean, Tennessee started 1-4, and four, obviously. UCLA started 1-5. and five. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt and Chip Kelly, both second-year coaches. Both programs seem to be really down and, and, and didn't have any hope at succeeding this year, but both Jeremy Pruitt and Chip Kelly have been able to turn things around. UCLA got wins over Stanford, got wins over Washington State, so UCLA is playing a lot better football. Uh, very balanced between Dorian Thompson Robinson, their quarterback, and Joshua Kelly, their running back. Let's see if they can keep this game competitive. And if nothing else, you'll get to watch Chip Kelly call an offense, and that's always entertaining. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for my Week 12 preview show. If y'all enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing below. Uh, just It's just a little thumbs up button. should be a button that says subscribe. And if you choose to subscribe, there's going to be a little bell that pops up. Just click that bell. All it's going to do is send you a notification whenever I post a new video. I don't want y'all to miss anything I'm putting out there. But just to make sure you don't miss anything, guys, follow me on both my platforms. It's at DeeperDive underscore CFB. That's for both Instagram and Twitter. I'm also in the process of creating a Facebook page as well, so be on the lookout for that. If you all know anybody who likes college football as much as we do, please consider sharing this with them. I would really appreciate that. And as always, guys, comment down below if you all have any objections, if you all just want to talk college football, if you all have any advice on how I can improve this channel. 
I, I appreciate all that. I'm always willing to talk college football. A lot of people interacted with me on, on Instagram this week. I really appreciate all the people who did that. Because like I said, I enjoy talking about college football. Uh, it's what I want to do. And one thing before y'all go, I started a live video Tuesday night after the rankings were released by the committee. Uh, had about 20 total viewers. Um, I think the highest we got at a time was about 12. So thank y'all very much for joining that video. That's something I want to do more often. I'm thinking maybe Tuesdays and Thursday nights would be a good night to do that. And with that, guys, that's all I got for y'all. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. and We'll see you next time. Thank you.